Hello. Hi. Just so you know, we are being recorded already as we populate the committee. You want to make me a co-host? I already made you co-host when I sent it, but I guess not. Hmm. Oh, am I? Make co-host. Okay. Okay. You're good. Up in our chat. <clears throat> Brady, are you around Thursday? Uh, depends on the time. I'm around, uh, I'm down in Springfield between eight and one. Okay. I've been down, down before two, so I'll, I'll be back by uh, I'll be back by twelve forty-five or one. All right, I'll try to figure it out to get the table to you. Okay, um, let me put that on my calendar so I don't go anywhere. Hey, Alan, I was in um, Orleans last week. Nice. Your family store. <laughs> Spent lots of money, I hope, right? <laughs> yeah. Is the library your family as well, the Snow Library? Um, it's part of, yes, not directly, but it is part of, mm -hmm. not a direct Snow Yeah. Library. Oh, cool. My mom was very active in the library, you know, as far as um, volunteering and book sales and all that fun stuff. So. I lugged many a box of books as a as a youth out of the basement of the library for book sales. Oh, <laughs> it must have been a really nice place to grow up. Oh, sorry. Well, very nice. Very fortunate to be able to have that experience. I'm probably gonna have to move inside some of my dogs. Didn't have any trees get hit by lightning during that storm on Sunday. Had a couple around town get hit. Some town trees? They're all private trees actually, no, no mm -hmm. town trees. No dairy barns on fire this time though. So that's oh, thank God. <laughs> Yeah, that was quite a storm. Yeah, I was looking at pictures from Vermont. It's just incredible. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, even, even over in Florence, honestly, um, it looks like uh, the, there's a nonprofit there, Grow Food Northampton, and they have 15 acres and it's all been totally flooded and lost. I mean, they can't, I mean, the, cro the crops are lost. Yeah. Um, but the mill, the mill river flooding just on the other side of the river is pretty significant. <laughs> and then I saw somebody in my department um, went and did took a video of uh, Shelburne Falls, and it's it's pretty intense. <laughs> and like the upper upper deer field is really going. And I think it I think it's not supposed to peak until tomorrow. Um, so yeah. Well, Wilmington, Vermont, where the Deerfield goes through, was flooded. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The site, the picture that they were using in the New York Times, or it was a video on the New York Times that they were using to show the flooding in Vermont, was um, this actually a restaurant that's part of this glass blowing studio that I we ate in last month because <laughs> it's over. It's a uh, it kind of like hangs over the river, and uh, it looked pretty intense and actually part of that bridge had been totally washed out I think in Irene in 20 in 2011 um so I don't know we'll see what happens yeah well we have a quorum I'm not sure where Shoshana or uh Sarah are Shoshana had posted something today that she was in the hospital with her daughter so I don't I don't know if that was planned or not planned 
Mm-hmm. Um, but that's where she was this morning. So that could be. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see that. I saw the Bennett's yeah. going to be here. I'll text. She just posted her. something on her personal Instagram that they were over in the hospital. So. I'll check in with Sarah. All right. So should we start? Sure. Okay. I'll just I'll just re- announce to everybody that we are um, recording this meeting and it will be available for view um, after the close of work on Friday. All right. Let's start with ours, uh, Julian. Probably eight or nine. Okay. Um, Britt? Three. Helen? Uh, I think just two. Two. And I probably had seven. All right. And uh, approval of the June minutes. I was not present at the meeting. Okay. No? Everyone else? Look good. I didn't hear anything, so I assume they're approved. Okay. Go with that. Minutes approved. Oh, who wants to take notes? I can try to take notes. Okay. I don't know how detailed you like them, but I'll I'll either overdo it or underdo it. One of the uh overdo it i can you know we can discard but if you don't have okay yeah um, yeah we don't need everything in the said but minutes approved you know who's here yep yeah great um if you have last months you can use that as a reference but got it okay so report uh not a lot to report i still have not written the letter to the boston globe i just am not writing these days i don't know um I still have the table. I'm going to get it to Britt. We talked about that uh, on the on our um, email account. We got one question. Someone worried about the um, sycamore trees, and I assured her it's just a disease that happens every year, and uh, anthracnose, and they're all coming back. They're looking fine. So it's a drag. I mean, they they don't look good early in the season, but they do survive it. Um, and then the other thing is, Alan, we all set for the tree inventory training on the 12th of August? Well, I have the date set. I just still have to arrange for the actual training. So I'm working on it. Should be okay. Okay. Um, and that's about it, except uh, the municipal reforestation program that Governor Healy's doing, um, or that, and is also in the legislature. I don't know if anyone else write about that. I, I filled out the form and signed on to that letter. Uh, I think Sarah sent it around last month. I uh, yes, I did sign on to that as well. Because that's uh, that's a pretty good thing to really push forward. All right, uh, Julian, vice chair report. Yeah, I sent um, that uh, thing out to five or six uh, <laughs> folks um, and got a good amount of signatures on that. Um, In addition to that, I have recently started working for the town, so I get to see the tree side of things um, and different work going on in town. One thing I did notice today was one of those uh, trees on the town common was near the bus stop was hanging a leader down um, driving home today, so that's something or the beach well, tree. Yep. Um, and yeah, I think that is all I have. Okay, thank you. Alan, Tree Warden's report. Um, not a lot to go over, but I'll just quickly. Um, obviously, we removed the uh, Norway Maple on College Street. Eversource is continuing to 
work on their project and work their way down the street um, in that project. Um, I have the date set, we have the date set for the 12th inventory training. Um, ash trees are declining pretty rapidly right now. Um, and we're going to be losing, you know, about uh, 12 or 15 ash trees in town, downtown along Kendrick Park and Realignment Park. Um, so those trees, you know, are gonna be, need to come down soon, probably by the end of the summer or fall. Um, and um, town manager wants me to work with the committee and so the town and committee can come out with sort of a public information piece on, you know, why the trees are coming down, you know, or, are we, um, what are our what are our plans for replanting? What homeowners can do to protect the trees? Um, things like that. So I'll, I'll try to um, get that ball rolling. Um, Alan, can I ask how how old are those trees? Uh, realignment park trees. They're probably um, yeah twenty years old. Okay, around there, something like that. Okay. Um, Let's see. Okay, um, we will be the town, my, the tree warden and committee will be asked to review the removal plan and the tree protection plan for the Jones Library. So um, we'll try to set up a meeting to meet with um, the landscape architect project manager for Joe's library so that we can all look at it. Um, we have to realize that I don't have any jurisdiction there and the committee doesn't have any jurisdiction there. This is um, sort of an information piece, trying to give it a chance for the public, you know, bring it up to a committee in town for the public to uh, discuss uh, with the shade tree committee. So we'll work on that. I think that's great that they're including us, even though it won't make a difference, but nice to be included in these things. Mm -hmm. Um, also with the Fort River School, so as that project moves forward with the building of a new school and the demolition of the old school, and um, I've been asked to review the plans there for tree protection zones and um, potentially, you know, DPW may end up doing the work to help save money for the project, um, but that's not, that hasn't been determined yet. Um, but uh, there's roughly 50 trees impacted, you know, by the project that would probably need to be removed. Um, but I have not had the walkthrough yet, so I'm not, not sure on that. I'm just basing it on the plans that I've seen so far and where trees would need to be removed. Um, they do have a lot of trees planned to go in. Um, it is a, a well landscaped design, uh, tree design. Um, yeah, Britt. Yeah, I wanted, I, this was something I wanted to bring up last month when I wasn't present, um, that my wheels started turning on at the um, Tree City Awards ceremony. Um, there was a presentation, um, on, and maybe you all discussed this last month, I'm not sure, but there was a presentation about um, not wasting uh, public trees, at, you know, the, the, wood resources from public trees after they've been removed mm -hmm. and including that wood in public works projects um in public projects was one way um to make sure that they get used but also to kind of incorporate you know history in some way the the um i i think that could be something interesting to for us to um propose particularly in the elementary school project you know if if trees are going to be removed is there a way that we can work in um some of that wood into the design of the project and the in this presentation there were some examples of you know libraries and schools and other places that had done it done this really nicely um so i just wanted to raise that point hmm. that's a great point we can you know there's a number of white pine um there's uh some honey locusts and some red maple and, and sugar maple. They're not large trees. Yeah. Um, there is one red oak tree, a pin oak tree, I think there is kind of large. I'm not sure if that's going to be impacted yet. Um, but uh, it would be a good idea to, you know, to 
investigate whether or not you know that's feasible to do. Um, I don't think anything is going to be happening there for a year, um, so we have we have um, some time to kind of figure that out, which is great. There's also like benches downtown and other things like that that the wood could probably theoretically be used for as well. Sure, and I think something on the you know with the library would be and that's later that's already been designed so that might be more challenging. And one of the points in this presentation was you know that this conversation has to happen like pre-design really. Um, so you know, yeah, there might be some creative ways for us to to try to get some of this wood used. Um, the Amherst History Museum lost their, you know, their historic apple tree, which um, fell over in the storm. Uh, yeah. I think it was Sunday storm. <laughs> um, so uh, they asked for some information on um, kind of replacement and whatnot. So I haven't, I haven't responded yet, but it'd be a great opportunity to try to figure out what um, variety of apple was growing there. And if we could, you know, figure out um, how to source a nice, you know, apple tree that could be planted there to replace it. Um, maybe the committee could be involved in that. Yeah, yeah that tree I had noticed was in decline before it went over. Can yeah, you... no, there's a lot of decay in it, which yeah. old, old apple trees all have. So. No, but this one looked, it looked pretty bad a week or two ago, yeah. Um, I think that's it. Um, yes. That's all I got. Good, thank you. Uh, well, our treasurer is not here, so no treasury report. Uh, Julian, anything new on social media? Not specifically. I have logged into the Facebook account, so I can use that and monitor that. I checked it before this meeting and am thinking to periodically post updates before uh, new meetings and that type of thing onto the Facebook account. Um, I'm just learning how to use it. So spent some time here and there sort of navigating the controls, what does what, because I am used to Instagram, but I'm not used to Facebook, so. Okay. And um, did this meeting get posted on either of them? This meeting got posted on Instagram. It did not get posted on Facebook, I believe. Okay, so between the you and Shoshana, really, we want I want everything posted. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. pretty important, I think. All right, thanks. And on to our agenda items. Uh, Mary Maple Love Letter Exhibit, anything new on that? You're muted. I haven't had a chance to do anything on that. Um, I was going to look into some grants, uh, and I will do that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, uh, the individual tree request policy. Um, I get it mixed up with the other one. Is that the one you went over, Ellen? Yes. Um, do you have it handy or? I, I, e remember. I emailed it to you. Yeah, let me see after if- After our last meeting. Let me see if I can call it up. Um, I can Not sure what to look for. We lose Alan. There we are. It looks like it. There we go. It says he's the host now, so he's come back, I guess. Yeah, my I don't know what happened. I lost my connection there briefly, so so I apologize for that. Just went out. All right. So, um, okay, so here's this. Sarah said she'll join when she can, probably around six. Uh, let me share my screen with this then. Um, everyone see it? Yes. I can make it bigger. I don't, I don't think this is the one that I sent you. 
Okay, the, the other one was... Um, yeah, this is not it. Was the native tree policy. Um, all right, I'll look through my emails to see what I can find. Well, uh, well that's coming up too. Uh, let me, um, but let me bring that one up. Um, I'm going to stop sharing just to make this easier. Ugh. I can't find it. Okay, it's somewhere. Um, one more try. There we go. No, I'm not going to be able to find it. All right. Um, does anyone else have it? I, I have the one that I wrote. I can pull that up. Yeah. Okay. And if you can share it, that'd be great. Okay. Sure. Hold on one second. Things get lost in Gmail and in folders. And... Yep. Um, I don't have permission to share. Let me see if I can give you more. I'll just make it co-host. Yeah, I can't do that, so you have to do that. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, this is just the individual tree request. Yeah. Let's see. I think this looks good. The only thing that's not clear to me, and then maybe we don't want this to be clear. I don't know. I mean, I, I think it should be clear. What are the criteria um, that we consider in approving or not approving a request? Like if you have, if you're making a request for a tree to be planted in the public right of way or in a 20 foot setback, you know, is that automatically is it just a formality for it to be approved or do we want to say like based on budget or tree availability or, or things like that? It's a good point. Yeah. The, um, be nice to um, prioritize. So obviously you want to, like, if you're going to set criteria, you want to prioritize large trees. Um, you'll end up getting a lot of requests for dogwoods. Um, you know, which so if, if somebody has a, a location that is a large soil volume and no overhead um, utilities or obstructions, then um, you know, it'd be nice to be able to prioritize large trees to act as public shade trees. Um, shade trees, yeah, yeah, and that um, you know, dogwoods could be planted, you know, smaller trees could be planted if it was in a confined root zone. Um, or, you know, overhead obstructions. Um, I'd say that and then where feasible, large shade trees where feasible. Not larger, just large. Okay. Yeah. I mean, is there something, and I'm just asking this question, Thank God. Is there, do we want to take into consideration 
for example, the property value of about, um, the requester, right? If somebody, for example, who owns a $1.5 million home is requesting that we use public money to plant a tree, is that going to be evaluated in the same way as someone, you know, renting an apartment that is requesting a tree outside of their property, right? Like they're requesting a public tree because they're not willing or able to pay for that tree themselves. Or is that not a factor that we should be considering? I'm just posing this as a question. Well, in terms of renters can't, it has to be the, the owner. That right, okay. Okay, so, so let's say then, yeah. you know, a, a lower income family owning a home you know, are, are those to be considered on equal grounds if we have a limited budget? I don't think this comes up often enough to worry about that, but we okay. could say, we could say, you know, we also prioritize areas where there are fewer trees or, okay. you know. Um, we could say we prioritize environmental justice zones and we'll work to accommodate the needs of a diverse range of homeowners. You could say something like that. Um, I, I also think it's worth noting that renters and uh, homeowners can always ask for it to be within the public right of way and the landlord or whoever does not need to give permission for it to be planted within the public right. right. You can always offer that as an option like I'd hate for someone basically just to say no, we could right. say, well, if your landlord doesn't want this, but you do, we can always put it in the public way. Yeah. I think this is good. I don't think we need to say that, Julian. I think we will do that, but. Yeah, I just wanna be clear for anyone yeah. interested. Yeah, I, I, think, I think this language that Ellen is adding here um, works. The committee prioritizes large shade, shade trees. Um, yeah, I think that I think that's great. I think that you know gets at what I was yeah. getting. At. I, I would tend to agree. One thing I did um, question, and it's not addressed here, is is there like a one person, one request, one tree policy, or could somebody request three trees? I think uh, there, we could request three. I, you know, we may not do that, but okay. Someone else? I was just going to say, definitely. You know, if there's a a large stretch in front of somebody's property in the public way, or as a setback planting in an environmental justice neighborhood, um, you know, we would definitely be able to. You know, we would want to plant as many trees as possible you know, right tree, right place. I, um, right. So maybe it's a matter of, change, you know, going back to what I was saying and some of these points of changing the language of once a tree, once a request is approved to, if a request is approved, um, parentheses based on, you know, budget and the, the decision of the committee, Right. So these are all things that we would discuss, but it's yeah. not, I don't want to imply that it's a given that you just submit this and then all these trees you're requesting get planted. Right. It, it kind of depends on the, on the situation. Uh, absolutely. I would also say like, for example, I remember on East Hadley road, we planted three trees in front of a homeowner's house. Um, and it actually made a very nice, uh, sort of line, um, both for the homeowner and folks exiting from uh, Riverglade Drive onto the main road there. And ultimately, the tree warden can just, you know, if it's, if a request is unreasonable or not a good idea, can just, you know, not approve it, essentially. It's, uh, yeah. All right, um, any other changes? Do we want to approve it? Do we want to think about it some more? I can send it to everybody and can mull it over. Um, I think this was gonna get posted on our website, correct? 
Yeah, if we, yeah, somehow. Okay. I'd like to run it by um, superintendent and just make sure that we're not um, saying something we're not supposed to say. So. Okay, so yeah, Ellen, why don't you send it out to everyone and we'll uh, discuss it again next month. Hopefully approve it by then or finish it. Great. All right, and then uh, the native tree policy, I guess that's what um, Bennett worked on. Let me share that again. Oops. Oh, actually, I think I already have it open. Oh, this, uh, I actually had the individual tree request policy, one version of it. No, oh, whatever. I think what we have is good. So let me find the other one. I can't find it. Native tree policy. That's what we're looking for. Oh, that's what I can't find. Did Bennett send it to both to everybody? Because I can look. He sent an earlier, he sent an early draft because I remember commenting okay. on yeah. that. Here, I have it, hold on. I found it too, um, dated June 16th. Yep. Okay. All right, you wanna share it, it? I pasted it in the chat since okay. I can. And I think my comment, I had sent an email on the 17th of June that said, um, you know, to, to me, it doesn't read like a policy. It reads like a, it's a statement, right? And so could we include some clear guidelines or criteria that our committee and future committee committees can use to guide their decisions around, around what trees are being planted, right? So is there like a hierarchy of questions that we can ask ourselves when selecting trees for a giving planting uh, site? Right, like, is there a native tree we could plant here that could do well? Or I think in an earlier conversation, somebody had mentioned, like, are we aiming for a, a certain percentage of the total trees we plant to be native? You know, is there some kind of goal? Right, and of course, this is complicated because what trees thrive here is a change, is a moving target. Um, you know, but I, I guess my main suggestion or my main, my main issue is like, can, can we provide some criteria? So it reads as a policy rather than just a statement. Yeah, we can. Um, do you wanna try to rewrite it? And uh... I, I can try to rewrite it. I'm, you know, I, I would like some input or guidance from, from others about like, what, what are our goals, right? What, well, what are we trying to do? To me, the goal of having the policy is we get asked this a lot, not a lot, but some, you know. Yeah. Why are you not planting natives or right? And um, I think it's important to explain. I think that's the reason we came up with this. Right. Um, um, I would also add something like we seek to plant a diversity of species to present to prevent the potential loss of many trees at one time. Um, I would say due to factors including disease um we aim to avoid synchronicity in our ecosystems or something along well, we don't want way. monocultures right yeah of course yes, yeah. exactly um, that type of thing but that doesn't answer that's a 
Yeah, go ahead, Ellen. Oh, just, um, you know, changing some of the language from seek to we do or, we yeah. will, um, you know, just being more um, fourth rate or direct. <laughs> and I think it's it, this is a good thing to have, though, because of the questions we do get. Yeah, so maybe maybe we don't want to then quantify or um, apply a percentage. Uh, so. You know, maybe the language of like, we seek to plant, yeah, native trees as the first option. Um, right. Our first maybe this is sufficient. Maybe it's just me being overly <laughs> analytical <laughs> as usual. Um, Why don't I copy this? onto the other document and we can read them together okay. as one because I think we want our language to sound okay cohesive um, and then we can make changes on that. That's great. Thank you. Okay. And Britt, you'll work on the rewriting. Sure. If yeah, if if I'll if, send it. Yep. May not be necessary. And this yeah. is called the what what is the title of it? Native Native Tree Policy. Okay. So the individual tree planting policy and the native tree policy. Yeah. Hello, Sarah. Do you want to do a treasurer's report? Hi. I don't have anything to report. OK. Well, thank you for joining us. All right, so we are on second Saturday plantings. Uh, we did good. Uh, I think it was a nice work day Saturday. Uh, we got everything done. Um, it felt nice being out there with everyone. Um, next month, we're going to do hopefully the tree inventory training on August 12th. How long do you expect that would take, Alan? Any idea? I would say we just take the regular, you know, um, three hours, nine to noon. Okay. I'm sorry, I will be um, on vacation that day. Okay. All right, so that's good. Uh, September, do we have ideas what we're going to do? Place to plant? Um, I do not have one selected yet. Okay. Anybody have a place to recommend? My daughter is not in this room, but on Saturday, she had suggested Crocker Farm Elementary. So I will put that out on her behalf. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we had a running list of places that we've all suggested. We did at one point. I can never find it. Does anyone else have it handy? Um, I'll have it in some of the minutes I took over the years. <laughs> I'll have to look though. Yeah. Someone Did actually mentioned like a Google Drive or something where we can keep all of these type of things. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's okay. a great idea. Yeah. Uh, the list we I have... have. We do have a Google Drive. Um, yeah. And it is under the Shade Tree Gmail account. So it is basically you can log into Shade Tree Committee Google Doc, Shade Tree Committee Gmail, Shade Tree Committee Google Drive, Sheets, et cetera, slideshows, all at the same time. Um, can we share that with members? And yeah, we absolutely can. Um, Share, make those folders all available to everybody who's on the committee yeah, rather than requiring fact, people to sign log into that account yeah I think like we can go in and share the folders or whatever I don't know exactly how to do it but yeah can you do that if you um, totally click on a document and there's a thing you can click on share and then type in everyone's email addresses awesome if they don't come up that'd be great thanks Julian yep okay but I found the list uh, the list we have from January, <laughs> Main Street, Route 9, Belchertown Road, College Street, Watson Farm, Dana and Blue Hills, which we did, and Orchard Street, which we did. So, Crocker Farm might be a good selection for a September planting. Yeah, yeah. it would be fun to get, you know, families and kids involved. It's... Yeah. They, they could certainly use more trees. <laughs> um, we've done we've done several plantings there. You have the okay. Years. Um, 
we don't have a good success rate there. Um, oh. The facilities folks are not um, careful necessarily around the trees that we plant there. So interesting. Um, huh. We have a lot of a lot of mortality in our tr new tree plants. So what what measures could be taken? I mean, could we just put like cages around, like you know, little? Are, are there things that we are, are you talking about like mowers primarily? Mowers, string trimmers, and mowers. Yeah. 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 I mean, I could also approach the principal and say, "Hey, we'd love to plant some trees here." However, we've tried. Um, I've done that, and we've tried. We have, um, okay. We have we run into this with the facilities folks. They're um, it's you know, they're bus drivers that go out and mow and trim, and um, yeah, they. Don't focus on <laughs> preserving newly planted trees. So. Got it. That's a bummer. I think we could. We don't usually put cages around the trees, and that would probably help. So. Yeah, maybe. I would think they wouldn't want to hit hit those with their mowers. Right. I mean, I don't have a problem for that particular school. That's just you know, my daughter said, "Hey, we could use some more trees," but certainly you know, other schools as well. Uh, you know, I think the the other two elementary schools are going to be changing, so it doesn't make sense to to plant there. But um, and I don't have a good feel for what the middle school and high school, you know, whether or not they need that. But you know, I'm just I'm just passing on the suggestion of an eight year old. Yes, Julian, are you here? Do you have an idea about the middle and high school? Yeah, so um, the middle school has a small arboretum in back that um, always has trees that die and need replacing in that, and it could be expanded, so that would be an interesting idea. Um, I recently actually just planted one tree at the high school um, in honor of a retiring, retiring dance teacher. Um, but there are probably more planting locations in the high school. Oftentimes the trees at each end of the parking lot will get hit by kids being idiots. Um, and so those will always need replacing. And then there is that center island area in the front of the middle school and the high school that new trees can certainly go in. All right. How do we want to proceed, Alan? Do you want to look into the schools for the September planting? Yeah, I can look into it. Um, someone someone mentioned something on the second Saturday workday, a location, and um, I didn't write it down, unfortunately. But it was a really good location, and now I can't remember where it was. Um, one we had discussed in the past, um, <laughs> but uh, I'll try to remember. Uh, what about down on 116, like not, not all the way up at the new traffic circle that's going in, but it seems pretty bare down there. I mean, Ellen, you, you cycle that way. Is that something you've noticed? Do you mean, do you mean from the roundabout at Pomeroy to- Like further, yeah. further up from, closer to town from the roundabout. Oh. So I guess it's more like Hampshire College territory but yeah there's a lot of just open farmland there i mean there's some beautiful giant maple trees but they're set back farther on yeah. the property um yeah that's a pretty long stretch of sunny sidewalk you could look into that that section i had suggested main street um sort of near amherst dental it looks mm -hmm. like a bunch of trees have been taken out over the years. Um, and that is a very well <laughs> um, walked upon. Yeah. Path. Um, yeah, well, Main Street was on our list from the January list. Mm -hmm. It's tricky. There's not much a public right of way there. And most mostly setback plantings on that stretch. Yeah, but be worth doing if we can get it to do have to happen. We did, uh, or I think I brought up a while ago, 
the possibility of uh, Watts and Farms, the apartments, affordable apartments in off of Main Street. I don't know. I think we might have to coordinate with the housing authority on that. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is that I'd imagine the housing authority probably might have similar problems to the schools with the mowers and folks. Um, and the people who mow at Crocker Farm are the same people who mow at Middle and High School. So whatever happens at Crocker will happen at Middle and High School. Um, that's worth noting as well. And then uh, the other thing was I just shared a new Google Drive uh, folder. There's nothing in it with everyone on the committee. So it should be in your emails. Okay. Yeah, it seems like cages could be an approach to these sites maintained by, you know, the same, the same people. Yeah. Or and consistent watering in the beginning too, right? And would doing a maintenance day and mulching. So there was like a clear, large mulch circle around the trees help. Um, it definitely would, but it would fade over time. Um, right, so we'd have to like stay on top of it. But if we like prioritize doing the schools with maintenance days to keep the mulch circle away from the tree, then they wouldn't have to get as close to trim the grass or use a string trimmer. Um, that's just an idea for- uh, the other the other possibility is we could have the little like watering bags around those trees. Maybe that would push them away from it, or maybe they'd just rip open the water bags and shoot them out with the mower. I, I don't know. But. Yeah, um, North, North Prospect, which runs at um, Alec North Prospect streets. Um, we did a planting on part of Halleck a while ago, but we've been taking down some, a lot of the sugar maples on the North Prospect side of that. Um, and uh, that might be a good place too. Yeah. So throw that in. Any, anywhere where a lot of trees are coming down and I, I mean, Alan, you have a much better sense of this than I do, but I feel like so many of the sugar maples, look they just look rough right now. And, you know, if we can preempt or, or get in there as early as possible with some new trees that can get some growing time in. I this think type of possible. heat, I would imagine, is very hard on the sugar. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, think about it. That's two months away. Um, Alan, if you could, you know, think what's the best choice. I'll, put, I'll make a new list and I'll put this on our Google Drive. All right. Okay, anything else on second Saturday plantings? No? All right, UMass interns, anything new on that? No? Nope. No, everybody's gone for the summer. I mean, the one student, um, I've already forgotten her name. <laughs> this is bad. Uh, Caitlin, I think, um, who attended our meeting, um, in May, um, she will be back in the fall and she is interested in being involved in the com in with the committee in some way, particularly around GIS and tree inventory work. So um, if there is a tree inventory training next month, I can certainly pass that on to her. I don't think she is in town right now, um, but you know, this is, this is something that we can revisit, um, let's say in September when everybody's back on campus. Um, if we wanted to put out a call, you know, to environmental science students um, for being engaged, you know, we could certainly do that. Great. Okay. Um, tree nursery. So no I should have shared. I should have shared this last month when we were, uh, but I wasn't here. But when we were at the. Um, when Alan and I were at the Tree City Awards ceremony in Greenfield, um, there was a presentation from the Greenfield Tree Committee, and they are having. I wrote this down. I wrote this down somewhere. I don't have it in front of me. I'm pretty sure it's July 15th. They're having a tree nursery open house 
um, in Greenfield, that is in four days, um, with the goal of kind of like sharing best practices and sharing their experience and setting up a tree inventory. Um, and it struck me at the time that that would be perhaps a very useful thing for one of us to um, learn from. I won't be able to attend that. Can anyone attend? I could probably attend that. I'd have to check my schedule. My phone's not in front of me, but okay. yeah. Let me see if I can find the, if there's like a link or something. Um, Do we know um, if the town is committed to giving the committee land um, for the nursery? Or is this just in discussion? Like it's, it's, it's not a definite. I, I approached the superintendent um, about using that space. And he said he had nothing against us doing it there with the realization that, you know, it may have to move at some point in time. But, you know, if we're doing grow bags, you know, moving, moving trees is not a big deal. Um, and we wouldn't have to move them, you know, <laughs> not something that would need to be done immediately. There'd probably be some kind of, you know, advance notice that, you know, Mm -hmm. The use of that has changed. So. Do, you, do you know, Alan, if there is any proposed use for Slow Buddy Farm? None that I'm aware of. Okay. So that's Station Road. Um, should we plan that for the October planting to set up the nursery? Sure. Might be a good time. It may, I'm just thinking maybe at the place they would eventually put a public works facility no uh, no <laughs> it isn't okay i think it's i think it's preserved farmland i don't think you could do yeah. that oh okay good um, it's actually part of the um, part of it's owned by the water water division and oh, part of it's owned okay. by the conservation land the okay. proposed area we're going to use is owned by the water division. so it couldn't okay that makes sense that's good actually probably mm -hmm. Okay, so that'll be October, September, we'll figure out from one of the choices and uh, that's good. Sorry, so. could you say, just for note-taking purposes, so October, we're thinking about doing a tree nursery setup at what site? Yeah. Which, what is the site? Oh, Station Road. Station Road, okay. It's Slow Body Farm, S-L-O-B-O-D-Y, I believe. It's okay. right over the bridge. Yeah, got it. There's an old equestrian, Farm. So there's a big horse barn there and an old paddock that's falling apart. And the nursery would be in the paddock, which is partially fenced and will fence it more. Right. And what what they shared some slides on their setup and it's all, you know, bagged trees. Um, they were able to set up a pretty simple irrigation system and they did fence it um i think primarily to protect from deer um so it seemed pretty simple you know if the site needs to move at some point if they're bagged that shouldn't be a problem um the one thing they mentioned was um in the winter they push i think they push all the trees together and cover some of them right alan isn't that what they said yeah they mulch them in they mulch them in okay yeah. Yeah, but they didn't have any significant loss um, over the winter. Um, yeah. But I'll look up, I know I, I took a picture of the flyer that they handed out. So let me see if I can find that and send it to send it to everybody for the open house on the 15th. Great. All right. Uh, town tree inventory was set. The town tree tour. Okay, if we're gonna do that this fall, Ellen, you and I should figure out something. But for now, uh, let's table that for now. For the library trees we talked about. Alan's gonna send us the invitation to meet with the the um, the, the developing whatever that the design team of the library. Uh, state level initiatives, talked about the municipal reforestation program, 
and I'm still in touch with uh, Mindy and I'll keep working on that. Significant tree ordinance, anything new? No? And the no. solar bylaw group? Nothing new. Okay. The, the one thing that I wanted to mention also, and it's kind of goes in tandem with the tree nursery was this idea that came up at this um, Tree City Awards um, of a, a wood yard. Um, so other, did I don't know, did you all talk about this at all last month? I don't think I saw it in the minutes, um, but other towns have set up wood yards, again, taking the wood from public trees that are removed and trying to create some kind of, you know, there, there are lots of options, um, you know, one, connecting with public works projects that I mentioned, um, two, um, creating some kind of inventory or system where you're then actually selling some of this wood um, that can be used and, and making conscious choices about how the wood is, how trees are cut down um, so that the wood can be used for various purposes, potentially sold, and then that money can go into a fund for planting new trees right. um, or connecting some of the wood with uh, local artists um, and builders. Um, and so I, I mean, I thought there were some amazing ideas. This was the same presentation that I was referencing earlier, but it could be really interesting and potentially bring in money um, for future plantings to set up some kind of wood yard. And, and the last piece that I'll mention that I, that I also thought was interesting for us to think about, um, I think they called it a wood bank. Um, and the idea is that um, low income folks and folks who don't have access to um, or can't can't afford energy in the winter in particular um, can get access to wood um, for fuel. And, you know, in the town of Amherst, I don't know if that's something the town would be interested in promoting, like lots of people burning wood for fuel, but there are wood banks in, I think Athol was on the list. I and was talking to somebody from the DPW in Athol yeah. Um, who said they do that. And it's a yeah. very successful program, actually. Yeah. So um, in more rural areas, the they the have. And the DPW gets rid of the wood. Currently, the town has a pretty large site uh, off of Pulpit Hill Road at a place called Ruxton. And some of the debris and stuff get chipped up and composted. Um, some of the tree, tree debris. And that goes back into mulch that we put around the trees and put in the parks and downtown and around buildings. But uh, aside from that, there's not much of a way to get rid of those trees. And some of them are old and rotted away, but others would serve fine for firewood and others, uh, I'd imagine local artists and other folks might want, uh, even for free, if not to be sold. Um, I think it's getting pretty full now at this point, but uh, I don't know what the town plans to do with it once it fills up. Yeah, exactly. So, so basically, the like the at the crux of this presentation was that something like ninety five percent of all public trees that are removed get chipped, and like, are there other more useful uh, ways that we could be? Um, putting this wood yeah. to use. And so the wood banks, right, like even donating some of our wood to these wood banks and other communities where, where people then get fuel in the winter, um, you know, alternatives to, to chipping essentially that, yeah. that put that wood um, to use is something that I, I would love to, for the committee to talk about at some point. Could the same thing apply to chipped wood? Like, could we do a mulch, a wood chip mulch bank? Because if we don't want to, if there's not a big need or we don't want to encourage burning fuel, wood for fuel, could we have, you know, donate or sell chips for mulching to the private town homeowners? Uses the mulch for the town's work, but I don't know. There probably would be enough stuff back there to have the town's mulch, the access mulch. And the uh, 
a wood bank and give away some of it to local artists. It would not surprise it, me if there's enough for all of that. I'm just thinking of it as an alternative to a wood bank for burning. So if we're already chipping it and mulching it and there's extra that could be burned, then supposedly there's extra that could be chipped and mulched. And if there's if the town's mulch needs are already being met, then it could be extra that could be sold or given to homeowners. Um, yeah. Just an alternative to to burning if that's not a big need in in the town of Amherst. Yeah, I can um, I can just give you an up. You know, kind of what happens now is that we have, uh, you know, we're out doing tree work. Uh, we have a truck full of wood chips. Um, we have a you know a list of places that want wood chips. People call up. We try to drop it off, um, and uh, you know that way we don't have to dr drive back to our area to uh, dump the chips. We also dump chips at the transfer station. So people can take chips from there for free if they have a pass to get into the transfer station. Um, we um, sometimes, you know, in when we're down at Ruxton and we're moving things around with the front end loaders, we will load a truck up and deliver wood chips to people who have requested it if, because we don't, you know, we don't always have a truck in the area to drop wood chips off. So if we have a a period of time where we can actually just deliver some chips, we do that as well. Um, as far as the wood goes, um, you know, we sometimes leave it on the side of the road, it disappears, which is good. We ask the homeowner if they want it, um, the adjacent property owner. Um, the wood generally goes to Ruxton, where, um, you know, it gets cut into random lengths. We do not have the proper equipment to load logs and sort logs and, and create a wood yard where we can actually say, you know, here's the nice wood, <laughs> you know, here's the junk wood, here's oak, here's maple, you know, um, and, uh, or, and, and sizes as well. It just gets put into a one-ton dump truck and gets dumped. And then at some random point in time, it all gets pushed up into a, a bigger pile. Um, we do have, um, a couple businesses around who will uh, have a log loader come by and, and pick up loads of wood to take for uh, turning into bowls or um, you know cutting boards and things like that. So they you know will take the wood off our hands. Um, there are some local artists who take wood. Um, I try I try to find places to take it. Um, as I've said in the past, you know. About seven, eight years ago, we spent $20,000 to process the last wood yard, you know, at Ruxton, which was probably about nine years old. Um, that same pile now is probably going to cost us closer to, you know, $25,000, $30,000 to process. So we have, there's a lot of incentive to find ways to reuse this wood and repurpose it. So I've tried applying for some grants, couldn't get it. Um, the DEP, I think it is, has um, in their waste reduction grants. Um, sometimes you can get some funding to do that. So you know what we need in town is we need uh, we need a log loader and a way to sort wood, um, which we currently do not have. And I don't know. Maybe this would be something that if we got a grant, possibly a contractor could do. Um, and then you also have somewhere like Wagner Wood. Maybe they could use the wood for their mulch or the other operations. They um they will charge us. They don't take wood for free. Um, okay. So they you know if we bring something there, we get recharged. We get charged. Got it. Okay. Um, so so maybe maybe what makes sense, you know, the person who gave this presentation, and I can't remember his name, but I wrote it down. Um, he was a DCR guy. Like this is what he does maybe what makes sense is for me to reach out to him he said if your town or city is interested in this kind of thing i will help connect you with resources and ideas so maybe it makes sense for me to reach out to him and say here is the situation you know a log loader could go a long way um and a couple of other pieces of equipment and like here are some of the ideas here here's how things are currently operating, like, what do you think? And what are, what are your ideas? Maybe that's a good 
first step, right? Because if this is something that, you know, would be helpful to you, Alan, um, that is, you know, cost the town money and results in this wood not being used in any meaningful way, you know, it seems like it, it could be really something to, to devote some attention and energy to. Yeah, I, you know, I, Sean, I mean, Sean is his name. At least the first name. I can't remember his Sean last Mahoney. name. Sean Mahoney. Yeah, Sean I Mahoney. Sean Mahoney. Mahoney. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, he runs a good program uh, for DCR. And, um, you know, if you want to reach out to him and see if he's interested, that, that'd be great. Um, Question. Does, do most of the people who use the wood chips, do they mostly use it for mulch, for burning? What do they use it for generally? Or mostly you know? for gardening, mulching, vegetable yeah. gardens, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, as a recipient of a lot of the wood chips, <laughs> we uh, we use it around all our bushes and trees here, and we have a lot. And we did a big uh, invasive sweep. We were, got a grant from the USDA, and we've been pulling out invasives and mulching around that to keep uh, new stuff from coming in until we plant new things. So um, it gets used, gets used, and it's well appreciated when Alan drops a load off. So. Nice. Okay. But but this wouldn't like diverting some of this wood for mulch. Like there's so much wood, right? Yeah, like, no, no, no. <laughs> there's yeah. still plenty for mulch. Yeah. 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 This we did talk about this a number of years ago, and we didn't really get anywhere with it. But uh, it's great if you have energy, Britt, to do this, and if we can get this guy to come, you know, invite him to one of our meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I I was just really energized by his talk. I thought it was great, yeah. and and I would be very happy to reach out to him and just start. Ooh discussing ideas Great. do folks generally burn like cut up logs or do they generally burn the chips in logs logs okay so we might want to think about that because maybe it's less work for the town to chip it um rather than just have the logs and do it like that and most most of the wood banks that are out there are volunteer driven um the group gets together on a weekend or whatever, and they have a log splitter and someone's cutting wood and people are kind of splitting it and people, other people are stacking it. Um, and then, um, you know, there's uh, some way to um, have people sign up and demonstrate the need. Um, there's some, Maybe they have some system. Yeah, go ahead. That's it. So, you know, it, it, it's a volunteer process, most of them. It's not Maybe. town employees. Uh, splitting wood yeah uh, to uh yeah. to give away yeah i don't know but maybe folks would be okay with getting like a whole log and splitting it themselves and using it um mm -hmm. if we don't have the volunteer capacity i mean i don't know what that probably requires a lot of resources in and of itself but still there probably are folks out there who would be willing to do that greenfield used to use their log loader they could, um, people would buy a log loader full of wood and they would yeah. um, take a load and drop it off at somebody's house. And nice. that's, that's the ideal way to do it because then you don't have to, there's less handling of wood and it's just exactly. done. Um, so. Is that something that we could do as a work day and advertise for volunteers and get people to come and do a work day? I don't know, in the fall, maybe when it's not hot. Um, to have people split wood, organize stack, something like that? Or is it too big of a job? It, like it would need a more sustained, specific volunteer effort? I think it would be, um, it would be an interesting thing you can do in the wintertime. You don't need, generally it's better if it's cold. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, you spend uh, four or eight hours oh my God. rotating through, cutting, splitting uh, wood and, Thing is, yeah, everyone wait. sign a waiver. Yeah, I yes. was gonna say, my God, we were freaking out about just having a horse at the museum. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People with that would be a good idea, though. And I mean, like January, February, that's probably the time when the most need exists as well. It's a great workout. Yeah. All um, right. So let's uh, let Britt talk to this guy and we'll. Keep it on the agenda. I'll put it as an agenda item so we don't forget it in the future. Yeah. That's good. Perfect. Okay. 
unless anyone has anything urgent more to say about it. I have a question about something else, but I'll let you finish. No, go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just on the Greenfield Tree Committee website, which is very nice. They also have a walking tree tour online, um, which is very nicely designed. Um, I'm just curious, are they an independent committee from um, the town? Like, how do they have their own website that looks so lovely? And so here's the interesting thing about the Greenfield Tree Committee. And I Alan probably knows more about this than I do. It's a nonprofit. Okay, so they're they're their own. Yeah, they have like eighteen C3. members or something, okay. and then they collaborate with the town. But it is a non. It is run as a nonprofit. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. All right. Anything else? We finished the agenda. No. Do we want to meet in August? In the past, we haven't. By the oh, we're meeting August twelfth. So, well, August, you're right. That's the. Uh, but do we want to have our second Tuesday meeting in August? Oh. Didn't you do a picnic? We did a picnic. We did a picnic last year, I think. Again. Yeah, last year, the year before, I don't remember. And yeah, we invited other committees. Northampton committee came. Do we want to do that again? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll reach out to some other committees and then we need to figure out, you know, snacks and food and where do it at Groff Park again. Sure. We need to reserve that, Alan. I do it at Kendrick Park. Well, Groff Park's nice because the kids didn't play. Um, but also like Kendrick Park, they don't, you know, that's Pretty nice park with playground in it. Um, yeah, Kendrick's nice. It's nice and shaded too. So it's more central sure. too if people want to. Right downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that idea better. Anyway. Do we need to reserve Kendrick or not? No. I don't think there's a plan. Yeah. Anything, so probably so not. let's, sorry, let's plan that. Um, does someone want to take charge of coordinating food? You know, just do pot luck. I think we did last time, but. Cups and plates and all that stuff. And anybody want to take charge of that part of things? I'll invite the other committees. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think everyone could just bring their own cups and plates and, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy to bring, like, buy some cups and plates and stuff at Big mm -hmm. Y, maybe a tablecloth. Well, it'd be nice. I mean, it'd be nice to have something where we're not just throwing a bunch of stuff away at the end of the, the event. Um, yeah, just a pet peeve of mine in public service. Um, and, uh, you know, if people brought their own reusable plates and silverware and stuff and, in a basket and uh, they could, I, uh, take it home I and clean like it. that idea very much, Alan. Um, we can put up, uh, like, I'll bring my reusable plates, silverware, all that type of stuff. And that way we don't have to throw anything away and the next morning I won't have to deal with a heavy trash bill. Yes. <laughs> so I found the link to the, um, just as a side note, I found the link to the Greenfield Tree Committee nursery tour and best practices thing. I'm gonna share it uh, quickly here. Okay. And Sarah, how many hours did you work? Two. Two, okay. So I shared that. Oh, it says event canceled. All right, never mind. That's weird. Oh, too bad. Yeah, I guess no one else cares about trainers. <laughs> it's summer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure if we reached out to them, they would welcome members of the committee. So maybe we do that at some point. Yeah, have a field trip. All right. All right, any last minute things, questions, complaints? All right, well, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next month or sooner if we pass. Brett, I'll try to see you on Thursday, yeah. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Have a nice Thanks, rest everybody. Of the thank, thank you, everyone, yeah. Thanks. Thank you.